You know, they say, don't trade your deadline for God's timing. You gotta keep believing, keep preparing, keep your faith built up. Fill yourself up with positive input. See, whoever has your ear has your life. So you gotta be very selective about what you allow in your ears and before your eyes. What you tune into, you turn into, right? I'm Terry Savelle Foy, your cheerleader of dreams. I want to talk to you today about keeping your dream alive. You know, I remember hearing a story years ago, years and years ago, about a young couple named Charles and Esther Darrow. Now, this was back in the early 1920s when Charles was 20 years old. He said he set a goal to one day be a millionaire back in the 20s. Now, even when he married his beautiful wife, Esther, he said he promised her someday we're going to be millionaires. Well, then tragedy struck. 1929 rolled around and the Great Depression hit. It devastated them. In fact, both Charles and Esther lost their jobs. They mortgaged their home. They lost their car. They used up their entire life savings. And Charles was just crushed. He said he sat around the house depressed until one day he told his wife that she just needed to leave him because it was clear they were never going to meet their goal of being millionaires. Well, Esther refused to listen to that advice. She just, you know, he told her, he said, well, go find someone else that could provide better for you. She wouldn't. Well, thank goodness, while he was feeling hopeless and negative and very distracted from his dream, Esther was full of hope, full of faith, and she stayed focused on their dreams no matter what. Esther wasn't about to leave Charles or give up on him. So she told him, she said, we're going to reach our goal. But she said, every day we need to do something to keep our dream alive. Keep it alive. <laughs> Charles said, it's already dead. We've already failed. But Esther refused to believe it. So she suggested that they take some time every night to just talk about what they would want to do when they reach their goal of being millionaires. She just wanted them to let their imaginations run wild. In other words, give themselves permission to just dream. So they began doing that each night after dinner. Well, all of a sudden, Charles took it a step further. Instead of just imagining being wealthy, he came up with the idea of creating play money. He said, we don't have any real money. Let's make some play money. You know, they hadn't seen any wealth or abundance in quite a while during that depression. So Charles sat around with lots of time and made some fake money. So Charles and Esther pretended to buy little things like houses and properties and other buildings. They finally turned it into this full-fledged game with board, dice, cards, little houses, and tiny hotels. And I'm sure you've guessed by now what it is. That was the beginning of a game you probably have in a closet somewhere called Monopoly. Listen to this. Charles's family and friends had so much fun playing the game with them that in 1934, they persuaded them to approach a Massachusetts game firm called Parker Brothers. But the executives there rejected it. They said the game is dull, the action is slow, and the rules are hopelessly complex. But Charles kept his dream and his faith alive. He persevered. His wife kept encouraging him. And one day, he approached Wanamaker's toy store. He told the executives if they would stock the game, he would take out a loan and create 5,000 of them. They agreed. The game took off. Well, suddenly, Parker Brothers became very interested. They replayed the game, but this time, they found the game imaginative, fast-paced, and surprisingly easy to master. <laughs> this game was copyrighted in 1935 and they sold it to Parker Brothers for $1 million. What am I saying? Don't lose sight of the dream God has given you. Do something every day to keep your dream alive, to build your faith and to believe for what appears impossible. Well, I wanna share with you three keys today that I've learned to use to keep my impossible looking dreams alive and to see them manifest in my life. Now, real quick, before I get into these three keys, I wanted to say a thank you to the partners of our ministry. 
I am so grateful for you and all the support you bring to keep us doing what we're doing, to impact lives and spread the message of vision. You know, when someone tells me I'm your partner, it keeps my dream alive. And I want to say thank you for sending me from success seminars where we see thousands come to the altar to get born again. Literally thousands of entrepreneurs get saved to sitting at a kitchen table or in the den with young women in safe houses rescued from human trafficking. I get to show these precious girls one-on-one -on -one how to make their dreams bigger than their memories. And I want to say thank you because I am so grateful for our partners. And I want to ask if you'd like to be a partner with our ministry, please go to terry.com slash partner. We cherish you and we pray for our partners every day. So thank you. Okay, so I read a story about a hospice nurse from Australia named Bronnie Ware, and she had the honor of being a caregiver of elderly patients in the last three to 12 weeks of their lives. Well, she began to notice this common theme of great remorse among these precious people coming to the end of their lives. She said, and let me just read this. This is in um, my devotional here. But she said that when they come to the end of their lives, she said, there was no mention of wishing for more Facebook followers or working longer hours at the office or even making a million dollars. Quite the opposite. She said, in fact, most of her time was spent in silence, just sitting at the bedside of these elderly people, and she just began to journal their intimate conversations. She said that she realized with each of her patients that her role as a caregiver was more about just listening to their dying epiphanies more than anything else. And it seemed like with each one of them, she said they had incredible clarity of vision than they'd ever had in their early years. They just needed an ear to listen and to share their deepest sorrows as they got closer to dying. Now, here's what she heard over and over again, said in many different ways in different sentiments, but the same thing. I wish I had the courage to live my dreams, live a life true to myself, not the life others expected of me. Bronnie said this was the most common regret of all. She said, when people realize that their life is almost over and they look back clearly on it, it's easy to see how many dreams have gone unfulfilled. Most people had not honored even half of their dreams and had to die knowing that it was due to their choices, the choices they made not and not made. She said, health brings a freedom that very few realize until they no longer have it. Well, in the words of the late Miles Monroe, he said the richest place in the world isn't the diamond mines of South Africa or the oil fields of the Middle East. He said the wealthiest place in the world, it's the graveyard. He said in the grave, there's books never written, songs never sung, businesses never started. He said, don't go to the grave with your dream still in you. Well, today we're gonna awaken your dreams and keep it alive until it manifests. So here are three keys from God's word to help you do that. Key number one is use your imagination. Colin Wilson said, imagination should be used not to escape reality, but to create reality. You know, I found out that your imagination is a gift from God. He wants you to get an image of where he wants to take you. You know, I always say you have to see your dream on the inside before it shows up on the outside. Now, of course, they teach this in sports, you know, the power of using your imagination to win. In fact, let me tell you a story from Bob Bowman, the coach of Olympic swimmer Michael Phelps. Now, he talks about how Michael Phelps is one of the greatest athletes to ever live. And yes, he had incredible routines and rituals that caused him to just rise above the competition, but he used his imagination and visualized his races daily. Here's what would happen. At the end of each practice, Bob Bowman would tell Michael Phelps to go home and watch the videotape. Watch it before you go to sleep and as soon as you wake up. But here's the thing, the videotape wasn't real. It was just a mental visualization of the perfect race he would imagine in his head. So each night before he would go to sleep and each morning after he would wake up, 
Michael Phelps would imagine himself jumping off the blocks and swimming in slow motion flawlessly. He said he would visualize the strokes, the swims, the turns, the finish, the walls of the pool. He said he would lie in bed with his eyes shut and just watch the entire competition. The smallest details again and again until he knew each second by heart. During practice, his coach would shout, put in the videotape, and Phelps would push himself as hard as he could. At competitions, all the coach had to do was whisper, get the videotape ready. Michael Phelps is the most decorated Olympian, here's my little gold medal, most decorated Olympian of all time. Well, that's why I love vision boards and dream books, because you're using your God-given imagination. You're seeing with the eye of faith where you're headed before you take a step. Picture yourself doing something that seems impossible or out of reach. Visualize yourself succeeding. Add pictures of what you desire to be, to do, to have. See, once you're able to imagine it, you're one step closer to having it. You know, Genesis eleven six 6 says, nothing they have imagined they can do will be impossible for them. But notice, you have to imagine it. Let your imagination run wild. Just start writing every dream that God has put in your heart, every desire, every goal you'd like to achieve in your lifetime without wondering how it could ever happen. Everything gets its start in the imagination. Remember, your imagination is a gift from God. It should be used not to escape reality, but to create reality. Now, when we come back, I want you to hear these two vital keys to keep your dream alive. Watch this and I'll be right back. Are you ready to embark on a journey that will lead you to fulfill your purpose? Picture this, a divine plan, intricately designed for you and you alone. And to help you step into your destiny, Terry is offering her inspiring Live Your Dreams 90-Day Devotional along with the one-of-a-kind My Personal Dreams and Goals Notebook. This transformative package is your key to renewing your mind, prioritizing your goals, and embracing each day as an opportunity to live out your calling. Don't let this opportunity pass. Seize it today by calling toll-free 1-800-795-5597 or visiting us online at terry.com. Act now and embrace the daily dose of inspiration, encouragement, and motivation that awaits you. Your fulfilling future is just a call or click away. Don't delay. Take the first step towards an extraordinary life. Call or visit us online to request your copy of the Live Your Dreams 90-Day Devotional with my personal dreams and goals notebook. Unleash your potential, step into your purpose, and live your dreams. I'm so excited to offer this special package we put together this week. I want you to have the tools to help you start dreaming again, letting your imagination run wild and keep your faith built up on a daily basis to go after the dreams God put in your heart. You know, that's why a daily devotional full of the Word of God and inspiring stories on every page is so important. We know that your life moves in the direction of your most dominant thoughts. Well, when you start your day reading, faith-building devotionals that prove if God is for you, no one can be against you. Keep fighting for your dream. It just gets your mindset headed in the right direction to win. And then, of course, the personal dreams and goals journal. This will become a vital tool in keeping you focused on what you're believing God for. It proves you're serious. You're not just wishing things will get better. No, you have clear vision written down and you're focused on it every day. It could be a vision to be debt free. Well, instead of just saying, I'm debt free in Jesus name. No, now you know exactly how much debt you have. You're single minded, you're focused on it. I'm telling you, you will achieve more in one year than the previous 10 years when you get focused and full of faith. So get this special package this week. Instead of $40, you can get both for only $30. Just call the number on the screen or go to terry.com and we'll ship it out today. Okay, two more keys I wanna share with you today. Key number two is build your faith. You know, when you hear stories of others who went after a dream, they faced obstacles, they wanted to quit, but they kept the faith, it does nothing but build your faith. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Well, we have a tendency to feel like we're the only ones having to wait this long, go through this much, fight this hard. But when you hear stories of successful people, you realize 
It's part of the journey. In fact, just real quick, let me read to you day 10 from the Live Your Dreams devotional. And just tell me if this inspires you. This is a true story. It's called Dig in Your Heels. From the age of 15 to 27 years old, actress Janine Turner auditioned an average of four times a day for movies, sitcoms, and commercials. During that time, she received at least 1,000 rejections and was only cast in limited roles in small commercials. Janine was down to her last $8 when she answered a call from a producer saying, we think you're the right one for this part. It was for a TV series called Northern Exposure. It was a huge success and it changed her entire destiny. Now, maybe you haven't experienced 1,000 rejections like Janine Turner, but maybe you're hearing voices in your head and positively from people, possibly people around you who are saying, you're not qualified, you've got the wrong dream, who do you think you are? I'm telling you today, dig in your heels no matter how it feels. Don't ever give up, ever. Don't turn your back on the changes you want to see in your life. Set your mind for success on the dreams you have in your heart. I feel like T.D. Jake sharing this. I feel like I need a hand towel to just wipe the sweat. (laughs) But listen to this. It took Catherine Stockett five years to get her book published. Stockett said she stopped counting after getting her 45th rejection letter. In fact, one of the letters said there's no market for this kind of tiring writing. But she kept working on her novel, getting rejections, working on the novel, getting rejections, even in the hospital while giving birth. Well, the hard work and the determination paid off and it inspired this memorable speech. Tell me if you recognize this. You is smart, you is kind, (laughs) you is important. Catherine Stockett's book, The Help, spent over 30 weeks on the New York Times bestsellers list. Doesn't that inspire you to never give up? You know, they say, don't trade your deadline for God's timing. You got to keep believing, keep preparing, keep your faith built up. Fill yourself up with positive input. See, whoever has your ear has your life. So you got to be very selective about what you allow in your ears and before your eyes. What you tune into, you turn into, right? Don't give yourself the option of quitting on your dream. See, whether it's a dream of having a baby, getting married, seeing your kids serving God, getting a promotion, getting out of debt, paying off your house, launching a ministry, or even writing a best-selling book, make up your mind. You know, there's something about a made-up mind that brings results. My dad always says, when you're on the verge of quitting the most, that's always an indication your breakthrough is just about to happen. Don't quit. In fact, one of dad's favorite verses is Micah 7, 8. It says, when I fall, I shall arise. Keep your faith built up with daily doses of reading and listening to material that stirs you up to keep your dream alive. Okay, the third key I want to share. Let me see if you can guess it by this story. I'm just going to read this. This is, um, let me see which day. This is day 23, and I titled it, Can This Dream Still Live? See if you can guess what this key is. This is about Tyler Perry. Well, Tyler Perry, you know, may have appeared that now he has it all together, but he had a rough childhood. In fact, you may have heard stories how he was physically and sexually abused growing up, got kicked out of high school, tried to commit suicide twice. At 23 years old, he moved to Atlanta. Um, He took up odd jobs as he started working on his stage career. In 1992, he wrote, produced, and starred in his first theater production. He put all of his life savings into the show, which wasn't much, but it failed miserably. He worked more odd jobs, often slept in his car just to get by. Six years later, the show became a success. And of course, today, Tyler Perry was named Forbes' highest paid man in entertainment. Isn't that amazing? Well, what I wrote about, I told Tyler Perry's story But I was talking about when you feel like the dream in your heart is hopeless, you have to do what God told Ezekiel to do in Ezekiel 37. Now, this was a man who faced a dead, barren situation, helpless to make any changes on his own. Now, this was a literal (laughs) valley of dead bones, which I just happened to have. You remember the story. God set Ezekiel down in the middle of these dead bones, and he asked him, 
He said, can these bones live? Picture this in your mind. There's no sign of life. It's all dead. He's looking at it. He sees the proof. Nothing is happening. It's over. Now think about that in reference to your dreams. Sometimes there's so many negatives all around you, it seems like everywhere you turn, there is no hope to be found. It appears dead, it's over. Well, God is asking you what he asked Ezekiel. Can these bones live? In other words, can this barren, dried up dream still live? Well, in the very next verse, God gave Ezekiel the key, the secret to resurrecting a dead dream. He said, speak life. Prophesy to these bones. Notice the solution to giving life to death is in the words of your mouth. The next verse says, so I prophesied. And it says, as I was commanded, as I prophesied, there was a noise and suddenly a rattling and the bones came together bone to bone. God gave them life again, and he will do the same for your dreams, but you have to speak life into them. So think about that. Prophesy to the bones. The dreams in your heart come to life by speaking words of life over them. So key number three is speak to your dream. Here's what I want you to know today. You've come too far to quit now. You know, Jack Nicklaus, the golfer, he said, resolve never to quit, never to give up. No matter what the situation, keep your dream alive. I hope your faith is getting built just by hearing these stories today. In fact, I wanted to remind you that you are not an isolated case. What you're going through is normal. I never want to give the impression that I just write my dreams in a cute little notebook and they just magically appear before I even close it. No, I have to fight for my dreams. I have to speak to my dreams. I have to keep my faith built up by hearing stories of other people who almost didn't succeed. Now, real quick, did you know that Star Wars, the movie, almost never made it to the big screen? You know, we see movies like that and we think it was just a brilliant idea and everything just succeeded. Everybody made a ton of money. No, nobody believed in George Lucas's idea. He had no money for funding. It was a bizarre idea, was rejected in Hollywood in the 1970s, but George Lucas kept that dream alive. He had a vision that required staying focused against insurmountable challenges. In fact, George Lucas was living in a one bedroom apartment and struggling as a filmmaker. I'll tell you this real quick. His idea for Star Wars was turned down repeatedly. Studio executives did not want to take on what they called a confusing story. George Lucas was disappointed but not defeated. Over the years, he had rewrites and rewrites and rewrites, working hours a day on the script. He said his story went through countless changes. Years were going by. By 1976, the final draft was ready. They boarded the flight to Tunisia to start filming with this unknown cast, and he described it as an uninspired crew. Nobody was thrilled about this movie. And then when they got there, this series of letdowns kept happening. Everything from actors were injured, set equipment was breaking. A rainstorm hit the country and forced them to leave. Even the crew had no faith in this silly project. But George Lucas kept the dream alive. He stayed determined and kept going. And that's exactly what you have to do even if nobody around you is cheering you on. Well, I want you to truly let those words seek in that you've come too far to quit now. George Lucas said you simply have to put one foot in front of the other, put blinders on and plow right ahead. That sounds like a scripture, doesn't it? On May 25th, 1977, Star Wars was released in only 32 theaters across the U.S. And to everyone's surprise, including George Lucas, <laughs> it broke all box office records. This strange, silly, confusing movie that no one believed in grossed $513 million. Isn't that amazing? What am I saying? Keep your dream alive. So when you're about to give up, remember, the size of your challenge is an indication of the size of your calling. So I want to help you this week. Get these resources to keep your dream alive. You know, we've got the build, to build your faith, I've got the Live Your Dreams Daily Devotional to help you stay focused on the dreams and goals God put in your heart. What you fill your mind with matters. So you gotta fill it up with faith building material. And then get your dreams and goals journal where you're gonna put pictures and images of what you're believing God for. And I've got samples in here of how I do it just to get you started, give you 
some examples of how to write the vision and make it plain. But I'm telling you, you're going to be amazed at what God will do in one year's time. So go get this special package this week. Instead of $40, you get both the Live Your Dreams devotional plus the Dreams and Goals journal for only $30. Get one for yourself and then bless somebody with one. These are the perfect tools to give a young person who needs direction, wisdom. They want God's plan for their lives. So just call the number on the screen or go to terry.com and we'll ship it out to you today. So I want to say thank you again to all of our partners. We could not do it without you. We love you. We pray for you every single day. And you know, my dad taught me that when you become a partner with a ministry, that same grace that's on that ministry comes on you. Well, I believe the grace that's on my life is disciplined to achieve your dreams. So if you're interested in partnership, please know how grateful I am. Call the number on the screen or go to terry.com slash partner. And I would be so honored for you to partner with us in ministry. If this ministry has helped you get your faith back to go after your dreams, be a partner. Let's impact more people together. Again, call the number on the screen or go to terry.com slash partner. And I want to say thank you from my heart. Thank you for making this possible. And please know all of us love you. We believe in you. And I'm cheering you on to live your dreams. Are you ready to embark on a journey that will lead you to fulfill your purpose? Picture this, a divine plan intricately designed for you and you alone. And to help you step into your destiny, Terry is offering her inspiring Live Your Dreams 90-Day Devotional along with the one-of-a-kind My Personal Dreams and Goals Notebook. This transformative package is your key to renewing your mind, prioritizing your goals, and embracing each day as an opportunity to live out your calling. Don't let this opportunity pass. Seize it today by calling toll-free 1-800-795-5597 or visiting us online at terry.com. Act now and embrace the daily dose of inspiration, encouragement, and motivation that awaits you. Your fulfilling future is just a call or click away. Don't delay. Take the first step towards an extraordinary life. Call or visit us online to request your copy of the Live Your Dreams 90-Day Devotional with My Personal Dreams and Goals Notebook. Unleash your potential, step into your purpose, and live your dreams. I want to ask you to help me with something very important. At our ministry, we are committed to many outreaches, but something that is so close to my heart is the work we do rescuing women out of human trafficking. You may not know my story, but after I was violated as a young girl and dealt with horrible insecurities and deep shame, I made it my mission to help young women. So each year we provide funds for local safe houses to give shelter and resources to young women. Not only that, but we've actually gone into clubs in some of the roughest parts of America where exotic dancers are actually being trafficked. And I'm telling you, going into these dark places, it pushes me out of my comfort zone. But when I look these precious girls in the eyes and tell them face to face how valuable they are to God, it impacts their life and mine. Well, all of this is possible because of our amazing monthly partners. Would you become a monthly partner with our ministry and help me fight against this demonic attack on young girls? Visit terry.com partner or call the number on the screen today.